Ta lohi si ma jeep jama wedge. Why piat isqui so hos baus kem Melissa Dory. Ken migma skelu to megamagi apana ulsan aish kem tamhulau ken moot. Ulsalker college ki ken moot. I said hello, good day everyone. My name is Melissa Dory. I first introduced myself in my Mi'kmaq language, uh, and then I introduced myself in the language from this land, the Inkelichin language. Um, I come from the East Coast. I come from the ocean. Uh, I have Mi'kmaq ancestry from my maternal and paternal grandmother, and I have European ancestry from both of my grandfathers. Mm, I grew up on the water. Uh, my fondest memories are my aunties, my uncles, my grandparents, all my cousins getting in our boats and picking a different island which was scattered off of the mainland where we lived. And we would go there for the weekend and we would fish, we would gather, we would share stories. Us kids were free to roam the islands and find sand dollars and starfish. My boy cousins would torture the jellyfish and I would be getting mad at them and then telling on them that they weren't respecting the jellyfish. And often they got stung when we went swimming. <laughs> and I wonder why. I can say I have never been stung by a jellyfish. So it's, um, my little disclaimer for today is that nothing I'm sharing with you today really comes from me. I'm not sharing any new ideas. I'm not sharing any cutting edge technology. I really don't even have any solutions for you. Um, and I know the theme is the sense of acceleration, accelerating because we're in crisis. Our planet is in crisis, but our people are in crisis as well. And when I started my healing journey, I really went back and forth of, well, if I'm really gonna help the earth and be a servant to the earth, I need to heal myself first. And I did that through ceremony. I did that through the use of plant foods and medicines. I did that through the use of drumming and singing and dancing. And I've had the great honor of being taught by knowledge keepers and elders literally from across the world. In this beautiful place, I've met indigenous people from Australia and New Zealand, from Peru, all over South America and Mexico, across Turtle Island. And it's always so interesting to me how many common threads there are and how common our stories are, um, the beautiful ones and the tragic ones. <clears throat> I don't know how uh, Truth and Reconciliation Week was for everyone this year, but for me it was uh, especially hard this year. Just a lot of challenging things were around that time, and mm, I was struggling. And in walks Monique Gray Smith. Um, we had her for the Truth and Reconciliation Speaker Series, and I had the pleasure of spending the day and evening with her. And her message was Re weaving love and joy into the journey of truth and reconciliation. I love that. She adapted uh, Robin Kimner's book, Braiding Sweetgrass. She did a adult, young adult version. And the messaging that keeps playing back into my mind is that this lesson of unhurrying, that we need to learn to stop hurrying. And so when I'm in these academic settings and I'm in, surrounded by scholars and everyone's debating on climate change and what needs to happen first and what needs to be prioritized and um, you know 
what's good science, what's bad science. You know, it's just really noisy for me. It just feels like a lot of noise. And I'm wondering where our information and knowledge is coming from that's informing us to take action for climate change, to make these important decisions for climate change. And I would argue that if we don't have a relationship with ourselves, and if we don't have a relationship with the land and the water and the animals, and we're not listening to the knowledge that they have to share with us, we may never find the solutions. I 100% believe that all the solutions to our problems today, even though we may not have ever faced them before in humanity, rest in our ancestral knowledge. And when people say it's lost, I don't know if I really believe that. I believe it's stored within us. I believe it's stored within the land and the water and the plants and the animals. And so when we're thinking about solutions for these extremely complex and layered things, I encourage you to go out onto the land, spend time listening. You can literally take your questions and your problems to the land and the water. And if you're in that space and listening, you will receive knowledge. You will receive answers. You will receive the next step forward. And the more you manifest that, the more the right people are going to cross your path. The more the right things keep popping up at just the right time to keep that movement going. When Donna was talking about how we have gifts, if we don't know ourselves and know what those gifts truly are, I mean our real purpose. And I feel like that is the problem today. Traditionally, Indigenous people very much knew who they were, where they came from, who their community was, what their purpose was, and what their role was in that purpose. I think that's a great place to start. Um, and I think that's all I have to share. So thank you, Limlin, Walalan. Thank you.